Hey, welcome back to my shop. Let's build an engine. for engine reassembly. I've got it all painted up. I took it back apart. I actually went back over with the surface plate and re-sanded these just to get them absolutely perfectly flat um, just so the gaskets seal up well. I will go over them with a really really light coat of, uh, of RTV just to make double sure that they that they sit and do their job correctly but all right quick interruption here. Uh, I have a nasty habit of calling every type of sealant that I use RTV. I'm not actually using RTV here. Uh, a lot of people use the, the Honda sealant or the Yamaha sealant. I'm using this gasket dressing. Um, just make sure whatever you use is, is fuel resistant and ATF resistant and uh, you'll be fine. Anyway, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Uh, I've got one half of the case is in the toaster oven right now. Uh, the crank and the uh, the other main shaft, the starter shaft, is in the um, the beer cooler. Although I probably don't need it because it's about 30 degrees in this workshop right now, so uh, it's probably cold enough anyway. But uh, I'm just waiting for those to heat up and cool down. Then I'll pull it out and get it all together. Let's see, short side onto this one, long side goes into the transmission. That slipped right in. And this guy slipped right in. There we go. Also push these, uh, the little locator pins down as good as you can. And go ahead and heat this one up. I'm using plenty of lube here, uh, two cycle on the gas side, which is pretty much just the crank, and then ATF everywhere else. I'm also coating the gasket in two cycle oil. Don't ask me why, somebody told me to do it a long time ago and it stuck. And a really, really thin coat of that gasket dressing, mostly just so the gasket will stick where I want it. That looks good. Start screwing some stuff together. Yeah, I jacked up that paint job real good. Crap. I knew that was stupid painting it before it was put together. Yeah, damn, look at the, look at the paint job now. Just, I guess I couldn't handle the heat. I had it in there at about 350. I don't think it liked that. I'll sand it down and repaint it after I get it totally put together. Beautiful. All right, now that I've got this together, and there might be a better way to do it. I don't know what it is, but the only way I know how to do it is put the whole damn thing together and check. But you might need some shims on your crankshaft when you're putting it in. The A35 manual will tell you to put two of them on, you know, one of them on either side of the crankshaft, 0.2 millimeters. You don't, you don't necessarily need those. What you want to do is put your shaft, you put your crank in, and then you want to check for any side-to-side -side play on that crank. If you can get that thing moving at all, you need shims. What you're looking for 
is no side to side and a nice freely moving crank. If you're binding up, that means you need to take shims out. I've got this one in and I'm checking side to side and I'm moving this. It's moving sweet angel whispers. Oh, it's so pretty. And you want to make sure that it looks pretty much centered in there. And uh, mine does. So, um, so this thing I'm calling, uh, I'm calling good. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, take out these now that I have it all tightened down. I'm going to take out these bolts and I'm going to put a little Loctite on them and redo them. But I'm going to do them one at a time so I don't lose any of the um, any of the, the the ceiling that I've got going on right now. All right, after you have those torqued down, it's time to put your seals in. Here we go, seals are in. All right, building this side up. First thing is this little guy right in there. This little thing goes in the peanut. That's the one. I've got this ready. Um, off camera, I, I torqued these. I'm sorry, I didn't hit record. But these are torqued. At least best I could. 
Um, you know, it's hard to torque something when it's spinning on you, but I got it pretty good on. And if you use an uh, impact driver like this and just kick, 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 don't do it a lot, um, but do it enough, it'll be on there. Plus this has a locking washer on it, so it's not like it's gonna spin off. Um, but everything feels like it's moving real good. I think it's ready to go. So I have the, uh, the clutch cover. I have the gasket on with a little, just a nice thin film of, of RTV on there. And, uh, and the clutch cover's in the, in the, um, in the toaster oven. So uh, I'm getting, I just do that so that the, the bearings get a little bit heated up because these things sometimes have a hard time slipping over those bearings. Damn, that's hot. Just like that, there goes all my paint. <laughs> oh, that was so stupid of me to paint that before I put it together. Shit. All right, these things don't get torqued down a lot. They're only, um, uh, well, like 10 foot pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna do the timing on this. I'm not really setting up the timing. Let me zoom in on ya. I'm not really doing the timing here. We'll dial it in. But really all you need to do is, your stator is gonna have a little mark right on the edge of it there. And then the case has two marks. Yeah, you just wanna make sure that your stator goes right there. Put the at first, just put a dead center of that of those two marks. Put that your your stator mark, dead center of these two case marks, and then later on we'll get a timing uh, a timing light on it and really tweak it. But for right now, I'm not being exact here. We're just going to get it installed and and call it done. This is what it looks like when I'm frantically tearing apart everything in my workshop, trying to find a tiny little woodruff key. It's so uh, I went back to my house last night disheartened because I couldn't find that stinking woodruff key anywhere and I knew I had it. I couldn't find it anywhere. My dad gave me this a couple years ago. It's like a magnet that you run over your floor and it picks up stuff. So I came in this morning and I started doing it under the under the workbenches, pretty much anywhere I could get it. I started doing it. Look at this. Oh. What's that? This thing worked like a champ. And I found my little Woodruff key. And we'll throw this on.
There we go. That's in. pretty much it. Yeah, you remember this? This is the uh, the plate I made to seal up this uh, the oil pump that I don't have. Um, painted it black. Or did I? My wife did all that for me. I can't take any credit. All I did was paint it. She cut out the stencil and the vinyl and everything. She's nice. Uh, I'm gonna go clear coat this. Honestly, I can't tell whether I think it's cheesy or whether I like it. It's certainly one of the two. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going through and I'm, I'm taking out these bolts uh, one at a time just to clean them up. I, they, they got painted black and I like them silver. So, picky I know, but uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to, uh, as I put these guys in, I'm going to lock tight them up and, uh, and then I'm going to torque them down as well. So, uh, so these are going to be in for forever. Just about eight foot pounds on these. Not very tight at all, really. All right, this thing is all torqued up. We're getting damn close. All right, now that the bottom end is done, it's time to install the 70cc kit. This thing's a piece of cake. Remember, two cycle oil on the gas side. There it is. There it is. I always twist these little clips so that the opening faces the back. I don't know if it matters, but I do it anyway. More two cycle. Now you gotta align the openings in the piston rings with the little tiny bumps that are in the grooves. The rule of thumb here is always make sure the openings are pointing towards the exhaust. Squeezing those piston rings so that they fit in the cylinder is really the only pain in the ass on this install. Oh, I got it! Yep.
Does that look as good as I think it looks? It does. That's a nice looking damn engine. Oh shit yeah. <laughs> I could use my impact driver for it, but I'm scared of that thing breaking off head bolts and cracking heads and whatnot, so that's all I'm left. I'm doing that. Oh. Oh, cylinder stud bolts. That's what they're called. Cylinder stud bolts. 11 foot pounds. I'm gonna set it at 8 first and go around like alternating and then I'll go to uh, the full 11. 8 11